He's John C. McGinley, the full uh, full introduction here. New season of Stand Against Evil that returns October 31st can be seen Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on IFC. So he plays the disgruntled former police sheriff Stanley Miller. So the Stan Against Evil. Good to see you. You go full Orson Welles intro voice when you start reading intros. Okay. And I love your voice. You have a delicious chocolatey voice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you you, Thank you, you massage that thing when Thank you go you, intro. Thank you, John. Yeah, you go down into Orson Welles. He's a sour, aging bulldog who has recently lost his position as head honcho yeah, due that's to my an guy. angry outburst that's my velvety at guy. your wife's funeral. When that's my John Fashenda right there. <laughs> yes, I just dropped in that. A, in a world. I always wanted to do those movie promos. Well, there's one guy who does them all. I know. Right? I know. What's his name? Don? I don't know. They did a movie. They did a movie yeah. about him. Do you guys remember uh, La Fontaine? Yes. Yeah. Good Paul. Yeah. In a world. <laughs> Opens. No longer with us. I yeah. Jobs think. open, Dan. Yeah, he died in 2008. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I got. Rest in peace. John can put in a good word for me. Uh, okay. Some of the other things that you've been in Scrubs, Point Break, Seven, The Rock, uh, Platoon. Anything else I want to throw in there? You went to NYU. Grew up right around here. Giants fan. You got your New York Giants hat on. I do. I bleed giant blue. Are you? Really? Yeah, I told you. But my grandfather played for the 1927 Giants. Did did the Giants make you cry? No, I'm not a big sports crier. When they won the Super Bowl? No, I was, I, I mean, I was really, that was, a, what, an 11 and a half point spread, the last one. Yeah. When the Patriots were coming off that undefeated season. No, that was, that was have a beer. That was... That was happy. Do you gamble? I used to a ton, and then I, I was putting too much homework into it because there was this dopey, everybody put 100 bucks into a pool when we were doing scrubs, and a, a film crew is about 100 people or so, so it was, not a, it was not a shy number. And I started doing too much homework, and it was just one of those dopey death pools, or whatever you call them, where you pick a team every week. And I made it into the eighth week, and I started to really want the 10 grand, <laughs> or whatever it was, what's 100 times 1,000? A uh, hundred grand, and I, it was too silly, so I stopped. How many episodes of Scrubs did you guys do? Almost two hundred. Wow. Is there one like when you? How surprised are you of, of what it was and what it became? Uh, very. I mean, it was a great gig, but it was a grind because we were ju just shooting single camera. It wasn't a sitcom. It wasn't four cameras and with an audience. It was fourteen hours a day, and so it was a grind. We spent much more time, as I'm sure maybe you do, we spent much more time with the cast and crew than we did with our families. For that, um, we started uh, the month before 9-11, and then we finished at the end of the decade. So it was that decade. But if you look at uh, toughness as far as TV, movies, or stage, the order of difficulty. Uh, do, doing a Broadway play, I was lucky enough to do Glengarry with Al Pacino and Bobby Cannavale about, uh, when was Sandy, five years ago, four years ago? So we were there when Sandy happened and the hurricane, and uh, that's the hardest thing. How is, like when you were there with Pacino, how, is it different? Like no, because I, I had gotten a little Al love down in Miami because we did Any Given Sunday together. Oh, that's right. Which is, I think, why I was in Glengarry. And so I had already, Johnny Cusack, who's my dear friend and a big fan of yours, told me, and they had done City Hall together 10 years prior to uh, Any Given Sunday. And I said to Johnny, what do I do about Al Pacino when I get down to Miami? And he goes, got to go knock on his door. And I'm like, this feels, feels like the biggest setup of all time. Because then, you know, then Gino comes out and punches me in the esophagus. And I'm like, I would just want it to meet Al. And so uh, I go, this is not a setup, right? And he goes, no. And so we're down in Miami, and it was a very dispersed set with a lot of stars. And I happened to be near Al's trailer, and I went over and knocked on it. And he was just like, John C., come in, come in. This would be great. I've been wanting to talk to you. And I'm like, you're calling me John C., and you're saying you've been wanting to talk to me? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so I called Johnny back, and I said, yeah, that was a win. Put in a good word for Cusack. Tell him not to be afraid to come on the show. Johnny's not afraid of anything. But I think now that the Cubs, uh, he, might uh, be, he might be keeping it a little slim for No, a but when they won, we couldn't get him. We almost had him when they won. I'm surprised Johnny didn't come in on that. Yeah. He bleeds I, Cub blue, man. I, I, the one time I had a chance to talk to him. He's like, the best. He best just, guy in the planet. He wanted to know, you know, it was just all inside baseball. He wanted to know the dirt.
He was like, what's Schilling really like? Like, he wanted to know things. Yeah, that, sounds, that sounds like Johnny. Yeah. Best. Uh, do you hate the Patriots? If you're a Giants fan, do you hate the Eagles, the Cowboys, or the Patriots more? Me personally, I'm not a big uh, Patriots guy. I, I, I'm okay with the Eagles just because Dad was down at UPenn and some of his greatest memories were on Franklin Field with 60,000 people che cheering. And so I grew up kind of being fed some, some Eagles. Uh, and the Cowboys, I don't know, the Cowboys haven't been a thorn in my side as, as much as the, I don't know, I just love beating the Patriots. But I would think that you wouldn't have a hatred towards them because you beat them. I don't. I, I mean, I, I, I don't have a problem with Tom Brady. I think he's the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL. I wish he was, I love Eli, but I wouldn't have a problem if he was on the Giants. By the way, what do you do? Can you be in the NFL now if you can't extend plays with your feet? Or do, is that the new must? I don't think you have to be able to run as much as... No, I just said... Yeah, I agree. Let's do listening I, I, one-on-one. I, extend I, I, plays. I, I, I was listening, John C. I think I was getting to the, to the point I was going to be making is Patrick Mahomes doesn't use his legs to run. He keeps plays alive. Eli... Even Dan Marino kept plays alive with his ability to shuffle in the pocket. Brady is able to keep it alive by his movement in the pocket. Eli, you know, he doesn't have any. He, he scrambled once in his life, and he, and he threw the pass to David Tyree. That's it. So that's the only play he ever kept alive, and it helped him win a Super Bowl. But I think you need to be able to do that, not be able to run like Cam So Newton. what do you do at the quarterback position? Um, well, would you rather have Darnold or Saquon Barkley? Saquon Barkley. Okay. I'm a believer. Okay. I agreed at the time that you take Saquon Barkley because I thought the Giants were saying, Odell is back. You, you know, we got wide receivers. We got a good tight end. Right, we spent all this boys. money on defense. So let's, we I got was, a new. I was in that camp as well. Yeah, new head coach. We're ready to compete for a Super Bowl. And the Giants are going to go on a winning streak this year where they're going to win five in a row later in the season. What happened against the Pan the one happened against the Panthers this weekend. Probably not. No. But you're going to have this moment where you go, where was this? And they're going to tease you. And then at the end of the season, you're going to go, gosh, man, they played pretty well at the end of the year. What do you do with Eli? That's going to be the big question for you, John. Boy, what a tease. The Jets coming out that first game against Detroit. That was a tease, boy. But do you like moving forward the Giants or the Jets' future? I think the, the Giants have a lot of moving pieces, a lot of great, shiny new toys. Yes. That if you could find a left tackle, and if you... God, it's such sacrilege to say this, but maybe Eli's great mentoring somebody. That it's not on the squad right now. That, no, you know, they don't have that. But, no. but I, I'm curious what they're going to do Me with, too. with the draft, but it feels like the Giants are going to be on the short list. Is there a college quarterback stud that everybody's already looking at? Who? Ju Justin Herbert of yeah. Oregon is up there. Google Giants and Justin Herbert, and you'll find a lot. Oh, what? Right now. Are people salivating over that? That's what already. intersection? Yeah, already. Yeah. Uh, who is the uh, Drew Locke at Missouri? Drew Locke, Jared Stidham, but Herbert is getting a lot of New York radio love already. Oh, okay. Herbert is, he, he's, he's the guy. He, I, I think he's considered the best quarterback right now. Uh, Do you, now that Sunday night's not Dan night anymore, is yeah. there any, you know, that great Edith Piaf song, Je ne regret rien, I regret nothing. Do you have any regrets? About? Not doing Sunday night anymore. You were a fixture. You were my guy. Um, and I mean that in a really genuinely complimentary well, way. Thank I you. Just, you were great. You were great. Um, Are great. But right in that format, that you were great. I Was that arduous to not? Yes. That decision? No, it was harder, that schedule. To, harder to do the show than to decide not to do it. Why was it hard? Because you guys, you grind so hard here, yeah. and then the weekend's also shot? So that's, that is the toughest part of my week. You know, that hour, hour and 15 minute show. It's, you know, oh. games are ending. It, like, it's really, you're landing planes at LAX. Um, oh, but, right, of course. But you have to make it seem like, you well, got everything I mean. under You're control. You're so nimble. You were so agile in that. And but I know Sports they're really you here, me. But yeah, Sports oh, right, Center helped me. You know, I because I did so many live highlights where it'd be like I'm I would be watching highlights it's with seamless. you for the first time. It's seamless. But uh, I, I just didn't want to sign up for five more years. Right. Uh, I would have done two more years. Did uh, you guys get to did you guys always do live 
or we, are you guys, I, it seems like they go to more locations now. Am I getting that wrong? Or were you guys always in a studio here in Manhattan? We were usually in the studio. We would be the first game where the Super Bowl, defending Super Bowl chance, we'd be there on a Thursday night. We would do maybe Thanksgiving, and we would do a, a divisional or a playoff game. I get it. It just got to the point. You know, I went to see my daughter in college this weekend. And, and I get it. Like, I never got to do that with my other kids. So, you know, I, I mean, you miss out on a lot of stuff. As an I actor. don't miss it, though. I don't miss stuff. If, if, it, if something's pretty special, between gigs, I like to be daddy the driver. I like taking people to gymnastics and to pottery and to whatever the electives are you're not doing at school. I like driving everybody there. And I have a special needs son. And I like attending to what Max's needs are. And... That's kind of the ideal, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's called being a dad and being uh, a father. It's 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 lost on people. Here's something I don't know if you can relate. The first to thing it. you do when when you when you call the agent calls and says, uh, you know, you have an offer to go to Buenos Aires and do blah blah, and I'm like, well, I don't want to go to Buenos Aires for four months. And they're like, is it a money thing? And I'm like, no. Did I stutter? I don't want to go to Buenos Aires. I'm really happy taking everybody to school. Yeah. And they're like, more money? I'm like, stop <laughs> saying more money. <laughs> oh, my God. But it, when you're in your 20s, though. I grinded. I did about four films a year. I said, yeah, I just, I thought once you got on the film train, if you were lucky enough to get on the film train, you should never get off it. And I didn't. I don't know if you can relate to it, but uh, whenever I win an award, and it's not very often, but when I do, uh, I, I felt bad <laughs> because it made it seem like I cared more about my job than my family. Yeah, I get that. I had this weird feeling where I'd go, I want to win, but then if I win, what's it? then it feels like, yeah, you really dedicated your life to your job. And I was working second shift for 15 years at SportsCenter. So all my kids were born, and I, I didn't see them during the week because of the schedules. You know, when I'd get home, when they'd get up, go to school. So it was crazy. So I'd have these... Trophies. That I no got way to look around at. it either. Not when you're grinding. There's no way around it. Yeah. You know those those Kentucky Derby horses. They wear those blinders. Th those yeah. blinders. Yeah. When when you when you're grinding, you better have blinders on. But that's why you know th these guys don't focus on their families. They focus on this job, and that's why this show is successful. And I appreciate <sighs> that. They don't care about their wives and kids. They don't. You see it. You see it in the work. <laughs> <laughs> How did Oliver Stone see greatness in What did Oliver Stone see in you? Uh, he came down. I took over for John Totoro in a play called Danny in the Deep Blue Sea that the guy who wrote Moonstruck, John Shanley, wrote. And it was right over on Bleecker um, at Circle. And John finally went to go do Desperately Seeking Susan because he was it was kind of the Wally Pip uh, Lou Gehrig. He just wouldn't go down. He was a beast. And when he finally <laughs> went to do Desperately Seeking Susan, I got to take over. And somebody, an assistant, assistant casting person, came down to see John. They saw me. And so I got to go up and audition for Oliver for the first version of Platoon, which uh, all the funding fell out. And then two years later, it, uh, it resurfaced. And uh, then he called me up and he said, McKinley, do you, do you want to play one of the leads? <laughs> and I was like, well, I was doing Hamlet over at the public with Kevin Klein. It's really important Hamlet. And I said, well, I'm over at the public doing Hamlet. And... Nobody, no New York actor in the right mind would have ever left that fraternity slash sorority of being in the Shakespeare Festival. Once you get in there with Joe Papp, you, that was Nirvana. That was as good as it gets here. And so I said to Oliver, I said, I got to go ask Mr. Papp. And he goes, oh, Joe, tell him it's me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to say Joe. It's, it's tantamount to going in to see the wizard and the Wizard of Oz when you saw Mr. Papp. <laughs> and I'm going, and I'm like, could I, could I go to the Philippines with Oliver? And he's like, you know, and he was this guy. He had a burner all the time, and he was this guy. <laughs> and he says, yeah, Mac, you can go to the Philippines. We'll, we'll do Hamlet when you get back. <laughs> and he was, that was his way of saying, yes, we'll, we'll keep you in. What would, you, what would have happened if you passed on Platoon? I don't know. I was a working actor in New York, so okay. I don't know. But that was different, though. Yeah, but you got to remember, it was a low-budget, independent, it was a $6 million movie uh, that certainly okay. wasn't going to work out because when we got back from the Philippines, uh, Top Gun was kind of the big mechanical Reagan era war movie. And that's not what we shot in the Philippines. And then the double down on the impossible, it, it turns out it was going to come out in Christmas and nothing says Christmas like Platoon. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I, I took my wife to see the movie and she was wearing all white. We, we snuck in wine and... 
she somebody behind her hit her seat and spilled wine all over her. So when we came out of platoon, the next next group was coming in. That's pretty good. So they see her like, oh my god! Like it, it looked like she would she just survived platoon and it was blood all over her sweater. And so people go, how was it? <laughs> and like they're looking at her like, God, are they? Sh- what what happened in there? And it was just wine all over her. It was the next generation of sense around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that. Your favorite line from Point Break is? Uh, you know nothing. You know less than nothing. If you even <laughs> knew that you knew nothing, that'd be something, but you don't. <laughs> Paulie, your favorite? Paulie's. Yeah. It's got a swear word in it. Why don't you astonish me? Oh, yeah. John could maybe get away with it. I don't think I could. That's pretty darn good. Yeah. Best thing about Point Break is that Catherine directed it. So it's an exploration yeah. of testosterone and adrenaline. And Catherine directed it. And Catherine that made Bigelow. it just a little more interesting than it should have been. Keanu Reeves came in a couple of years ago. He's the best. He was unbelievable, He's the best. John. He came in by himself, no PR people. He was 50 at the time, he looked 35. He's the best. And he just told us stories for days. And I, I was like, I, I had no idea what I was getting with Plus, him. Plus, genuinely nice. It's not an act. He just was really classic. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, you can see Stand Against Evil returns October 31st. That's my guy. Can be seen Wednesday. That's my guy. <laughs> if you need me for voiceover for Pour Stand Pour some butter on it, baby. Stand, <laughs> Pour stand some butter evil, on it. I'd be more than happy to be your voiceover guy for Stand Against Loving Evil. Loving you. Wednesdays at 10 on IFC. That's my guy. New York Giants apologist, all-around great guy, John C. <laughs> McGinley, and see him in Stan Against Evil. Nice. Johnny, thank you. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thanks All right. for having me. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.